Hey, I'm talking to you speakers out there today. I'm a speaker too. My name is Katrina Sawa and I have been speaking in my, in my own business for 20 years now, but also before that in the jobs that I've had for at least five prior to starting my own business. And I want to share some stuff about speaking today. I've actually been, I had a call for speakers out, as many of you know, because I've messaged you. Uh, I know a lot of people in the speaker industry. Um, and I'm not saying it's good or bad or whatever your decisions are. It's not a bad thing. But I just want to suggest maybe consider being a little bit more open to opportunities that are coming your way. When I was starting in my business, the first five to seven years at least, I was pretty much in an ego space. Now I had no right to be an ego space because I didn't know a lot about stuff then. And I paid and hired coaches, of course, but I didn't always listen to them. <laughs> uh, and when it came to speaking, gosh, I would speak to anybody. And in the beginning, I probably gave way too much content. I know I did because I was told I did um, for free, right? And now 20 years into my business, you might think, well, oh, you know, maybe she only, you know, is paid to speak. And, and yes, of course, if you're going to speak to corporate or something like that, uh, you definitely should have a paid speaking engagement or contract or agreement. Uh, and that's a different, that's a different market. So if you are looking for getting clients though, which are entrepreneurs or individuals even, or other speakers or authors or coaches, um, there's a lot of different ways to speak. And some of them can be very lucrative, okay? Now, some of you may have paid to speak in the past and gotten burned because the, the presenter or the organizer of the event didn't fill the room like they said they were going to. And I get that's a big concern and it has been for me as well. Uh, as a speaker, considering which ones, which people to trust that they're going to fill the room, right? I get that. And, uh, but when, if you have something of value that you know, uh, a lot of people want what you've got, right? Then in the back of the room, or even in the follow up over the next three, four months, or even three years, you could make tens of thousands of dollars, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on what you're selling from any opportunity. Now, a paid speaking gig, when we pay you X dollars and you speak and that's it, end of the end of deal, right? Sometimes you're only making 5,000 or 10,000. That's it. And maybe your travel expenses, but what if you had a $20,000 program, which I know many of you do, or even a $10,000 offering, which I also know many of you do, one client is like almost better than getting a paid speaking gig in that regard. So, but you can't sell from those paid speaking gigs, yet you can sell from a lot of pay to play opportunities. You can sell from a lot of free speaking opportunities, yet you're limiting yourself. And maybe it's because you have mentors saying, oh, you should never pay to play. Or maybe you're a part of the National Speakers Association, which frankly, I'm not, but, and I have friends that are, and I've spoken at National Speakers, but they're not in the past, especially they haven't been a fan of, they, they turn their nose down at the pay, pay to speak models and they all want to get paid. But gosh, it's such a different world these days, you know? And yeah, there's Zoom and virtual events all over the place. And yeah, you may not have to leave your house, but some of you I know want to leave your house. Some of you I know want to go to a conference and not only get back up on a bigger stage, maybe to get even some new headshots or no new video reels for your website. Think about that. Sometimes we pay to play because we can get the video of our talk and that costs money and you can't just get a video of you on stage with a couple hundred people in an audience watching uh without paying to to speak so sometimes paying to play at an event where you know there's going to be you know lots of people in the audience and could benefit you in many different ways i'm just saying that because sometimes we think i see some of my speaker friends who i love dearly uh, refusing to pay to speak at, say, my conference. And I get it if it's not the right target audience for you. I get it if your dates, the dates aren't available and yada, yada. But just to say no, because you 
quote unquote, don't pay to play, when you're not thinking about all the different variables and things that you could actually, how you could get a return on investment by doing something like I'm suggesting and at the International Speaker Conference that I'm hosting this August in Dallas. Um, I'm just saying that you might want to reconsider because I really want those top-notch speakers of you, those speaker, those seasoned speakers that I know and love, that I know rock your talk and have amazing programs, products, and services, especially those geared towards speakers, you guys need to be speaking at this conference. And you need to maybe consider getting out of your little head around paying to play because frankly I gotta put the show on right so there has to be dollars in the bank to do that I'm not gonna put that I want all of us to get together I'm trying to create a win-win-win for speakers with this event frankly I want as many speakers and my friends and everybody that I know in one room to collaborate to network to do joint ventures to find other speaking opportunities, to share resources, to find other ways to improve ourselves and our businesses. That is why I'm putting this event on. I'm not putting this event on to line my pockets. Frankly, I just want to create, uh, you know, I wanna pay for the thing so I can get the people there. I need to bring the people and I know that's on me and I don't see any problem doing that. Um, but I want to lock in my speakers right now. I want those of you that are con like considering, oh, I don't pay to play. What if you're getting the video of you and new headshots on stage because that's included? What if you can sell your thing on stage, but also in your vendor booth the whole, the whole time, right? You know, if you've got millions and millions of dollars and you've got money coming out of your ears and you don't need to work at all, then Okay, fine. I can see where you can say no, but if you're still looking to grow and scale your business, then this is going to be a really great place for you to be. Now, you can refuse to speak and just attend. Of course, you can do that and work the room. Please come. I want to see as many of you there as possible so we can all network and collaborate. Um, you can also just do a vendor booth if you don't want to pay to play, but there's some big name speakers coming and they're paying to play. And or we worked out other deals for speaking to sell and all that. So I'm open to working some deals, but you don't, I don't know. I just feel like people are just saying no just to spite them, the the thing, the mentality of a pay to play. And I'm just throwing out there, there's a lot of other stuff that you can get from being a part of a pay to play event like this one and many others out there. I held a, an online speaker summit, for example, in February, and it was a much lower investment, but it was a pay to play. And I had 27 people pay me to speak on my stage uh, virtually, right? Because they knew I would bring the marketing. And I did, there were 650 people virtually at that event or that have registered for that event. So I can bring it if you bring it. So I'm putting a challenge out there to my speaker friends who are, who are kind of on the fence or waffling because of this whole pay to play thing. And I'm just telling you, I'm going to bring my game if you bring your game. And I want to see you there regardless, because people need what you have. These speakers that are going to be attending need what you're teaching and what you're sharing. And frankly, they're going to miss out. And so I hope you will reconsider. Now, with that being said, uh, I only have 19 breakout spots available. The keynotes are all taken and uh, there's nothing wrong with a breakout, you guys. And depending on how many I get, um, I might just do two tracks instead of three. So I want to make it a win-win for you, for me, all the speakers, all the vendors, and all the attendees. So think about that. And you can go to speakerconference 2022.com for all the details on how to apply to speak or become a vendor and I'll be adding more um, sponsor opportunities later once we get the speakers solidified. Uh, speakerconference 2022.com. I'm Katrina Sawa uh, with jumpstartyourbiznow.com and jumpstartpublishing.net and I've been doing this a long time. I have a lot of connections and I have no doubt we're going to get a really great audience for you. So, but you have to trust. You have to trust that it'll all work out and you're going to be amazing and you're going to make 
tons of money from this opportunity. So there you have it. And hopefully this is helpful to those of you who didn't even know I was looking for speakers uh, that are speakers and might want more information as well, whether it's this event or any other, just open your mind to what else is possible and don't maybe don't be so rigid on your requirements, you know, as far as how you will speak. Because getting clients, speaking is the fastest path to cash. Getting clients, it, it doesn't matter. I'll speak for free, pay to play, whatever. It doesn't matter as long as my target audience is in attendance. So, but that's me and you do you, I'll do me and let me know if you have any questions. <laughs>